Milwaukee released a hatchet that takes a battery. Is it something you need? We'll see. This is Milwaukee's M18 fuel hatchet or otherwise an eight inch pruning saw. Now we first saw this at the Milwaukee pipeline event, uh, not back in June, maybe in August, I believe. So a couple of months ago, and it was a big hit there. We were very surprised at the power that this thing lays down. So let's go ahead and dive in, take a closer look at the features. We'll talk about some of the specs like chain speed, explain some of the chain speed, and then we'll take this out and use it and then come back and talk about pricing, about warranty, as well as what we think of it. The model number on this is the Milwaukee 3004-20. Now the dash 20 tells us that's a bare tool. So you can buy this in bare tool form, I don't believe you can even buy it as a kit uh, yet anyway. I'm sure that we'll see some combos come out as well as you'll probably be able to buy it in a kit form very soon as well. Um, but anyway, this is the M18 Fuel and they're calling it the Hatchet, the M18 Fuel Hatchet. Um, and it's an eight inch pruning saw. So obviously running on their M18 platform, we don't have a battery in it because while we're messing with a chainsaw chain, uh, I want to have some cut proof gloves on as well as not have a battery in the saw. So let's talk about some of the features as we look this over. So I'll pull the guard off here. Uh, usually they just kind of slip on and don't have this additional uh, kind of catch, if you will. I like that because the smaller the bar, it's just going to slide off, but that kind of catches on the bar nuts, which it, it may or may not work. Anyway, I like the idea. So. Move that aside, uh, we have an eight inch bar. Uh, I don't see any organ markings on it, but I think it's a pretty common um, small, like a, a pole saw chain and bar set. The chain size is a three eighths inch by 043, and it is a low profile chain. Any of your smaller battery powered stuff is gonna run a low profile. Just cuts through a lot cleaner and not as much pressure on it and so forth anyway. And it is a 33 tooth blade. I like the fact that we do have a typical stud and nut for retaining the bar or keeping the tension on the chain. And then we have a standard tensioner here as well. And again, we'll pull this cover off in just a few moments. It's also an automatic oiler. So if we look on the other side here, we have an oil tank and no tools needed to open that up. In fact, we'll get rid of a little advertisement there. Um, real quick, almost like it looks like a quarter turn. Yeah quarter turn and that's off so that's nice and it is translucent so we can see our bar oil in there uh, without having to open it up and take a look obviously our typical scrunches are going to be able to open that also speaking of scrunch uh, underneath here we do have a typical scrunch we don't have any spark plugs to take out uh, but we can use this on our bar nut as well as for tensioning the chain and to pull this out you just lift up here on the screwdriver side of the scrunch and then slide this out. So I like that retainage. That's actually going to hold, I think. Um, so you see uh, that little cylinder there, you slide this over here and close that down. And again, that's gonna be used over here when we go to loosen or remove our bar and set the tension on the chain, which again, we'll go over in just one moment. We also have a little keyhole here where we can actually hang that. So put a screw on the wall and actually hang this saw. And then we also have a lanyard loop here also so if you're hanging from your side if you're wanting to play the arborist and uh, hang this from a lanyard it's ready to do so you'll notice here we don't have your typical blade break where you actually throw it forward and lock the blade it's actually right here so one-handed you can unlock this pull the trigger and engage that chain that's all you don't have to turn a button on you don't have to push any buttons you don't have to you know throw a, a blade lock one way or the other just pull this down and that's ambidextrous. So if you're left-handed, you can do it from this side as well. And once you do that, you can engage the trigger. Otherwise that trigger is locked out until that's pulled down. We do get a variable speed trigger as well. So we can vary that speed. And then we have metal bucking spikes on here. I, I like that idea. Not that you're going to be felling many trees with this, but still, if you're going to have bucking spikes, I don't like having just plastic ridges. If you're going to have it, put it on there. I think those plastic ridges on the fronts of a lot of those battery powered saws are just useless. You, you might as well not even have them. You'll notice also that your basically kind of your blade guard, if you will, is, is right here. So the idea is you're going to have your second hand here, primary hand here, 
and that's going to ensure that you have both hands taken care of uh, so they're not in the blade area. Now let's talk about speed for a moment. Uh, they're claiming 2600 RPM, which is interesting uh, because we're not getting a direct drive off the motor because the brushless motor is sitting up here vertically uh, and the blade is obviously turning this way. So we're probably either we have a pinion gears or a worm drive situation, not sure which, uh, and then delivering 2600 RPM to the blade. Uh, they're also claiming a five meter per second chain speed. So let's actually dig into that math and see, and let's do so by taking off this guard. I'm gonna take our scrunch and loosen the bar nut. And we'll remove the cover. Okay, so this is how you would, you know, clear debris out of here as well as let's go ahead and take off this bar and chain and also point out that right, right here is your automatic oiler. So your oil's coming out of the tank and it's going in this little area right here. And then that lines up with the holes right here. So your bottom one is actually the tensioner and the top one is actually where the oil is gonna go in and that is going to oil that bar and oil that chain. So it's gonna go in this groove here and keep that chain oiled and ensure that you're getting some decent lubrication. So again, they claim a five meter per second uh, chain speed. And let's just make some marks on here for a second. So I'm gonna look at my sprocket here and I'm gonna put a mark on this tooth right here. And we'll put a mark here. So that aligns with that mark. And let's count teeth, one, two, three, four, five, six. So six teeth. So we've got a six tooth sprocket. So we know every one revolution, we're going six lengths of the chain. So let's uh, take a look at this chain. You'll get where I'm going here in one moment. And I'm going to just uh, mark this one here and know that, so let's just mark this tooth here. So I'm gonna mark that tooth. So then we know that every one, two, three, four, five, six teeth, every six teeth is a revolution. In fact, let's put it on the bar. So we're gonna say a tooth here, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Yep. So that's every six teeth. Take our calipers here. So about four, let's call it 4.4 inches. So every revolution is 4.4 inches. And just to validate what I'm talking about, so again, we've got our, our mark here, and then again, call it right there where that sprocket lines up. And I'll show you here when I do a complete revolution that this mark here should go all the way to this mark up here. There we go, there's our mark and our marks are lined up. So we know every revolution, we're getting 4.4 inches. So if we take our 4.4 inches and we multiply that times 2600 RPM, that gives us 11,440. Okay, if we take our 11,440, that is inches per minute, okay? So if we take 11,440 and we divide by 12, we get 950 feet per minute. Well, typically when we look at chainsaws, we see feet per second, meters per second, something like that. And Milwaukee had claimed five meters per second, okay? So if we take 950 and we divide by 60, that's gonna give us per second. So that's 15.9 feet per second. And if you convert five meters to feet, that's 16.4. So I would call that an equal. So 15.9 meters per second, as long as we're turning 2,600 RPM. And we know that's probably a no load speed, but just wanted to tell you that the calculation kind of works out by the math we're doing uh, by sprocket size and chain link. Okay, so our math works out 
We'll put our guard back on here. Capture nut on there. And we'll leave that nut loose because we want to tension this chain. That's actually pretty tight, which normally what I'd like to see is when you pull down on the chain on the bottom of the bar uh, that you see kind of just the top of the tooth. Uh, even with the bar with just some light tension. However, the shorter the bar gets, the tighter you want to be on that because you don't want to be throwing a chain on such a short bar. So I'm going to probably leave that as good, but you can see here with the bar not loose, you turn it to the left and that's going to loosen up that chain. And again, that's just too much, too little tension for such a short bar. So I'm going to tighten that up a bit and then tighten that bar down. Now, just to give you an idea, the size of this uh, without the battery, you're looking at right at 19 and three quarters of an inch from uh, front to back. Now, width on this is it's pretty, pretty narrow tool. Uh, looks like about four inches, even considering the, uh, the oiler cap here. So very narrow tool, uh, should be very handy to use. And then let's talk about weight. And we'll go ahead, I'm going to run this with the 6.0 battery. So I'm going to throw the 6.0 battery on it, which is a bit heavier than, say, a 5. And so 7 pounds, 4.5 ounces. And with the 5.0 battery, 6 pounds, 8 ounces. So 6.5 pounds uh, with the 5.0 and a little over 7 with the 6.0 battery. So let's go out and use this. All right, let's first uh, fill this tank with some bar oil. We definitely don't want to be running that dry. Now we can see that translucent tank that we can see the oil level in there, which by the way, I don't like running translucent oil when I have a translucent tank because you can't see it. So I always add either a little bit of uh, automatic transmission fluid or even uh, some two stroke oil, something to color it a little bit so that you can actually see that if you are running, running like a translucent bar, bar oil, because as that gets dirtier, that's harder to see through, but now I can easily see the level of my bar oil. As I mentioned, I'm gonna be running this on a uh, six amp hour battery, the high output XC 6.0. And what we're going to start cutting here, uh, I don't know, that's probably three inch. Yeah, that's probably three inches once we get in there, maybe two and a half inch. Uh, I guess it's probably only two inches. So we're gonna start with this two inch limb and then we'll move up to some bigger stuff. So again, kind of proper holding technique is hand through here to capture that secondary hand, first hand here, and I have to release the trigger lock. But then you'll notice within one second, I'm at full speed. cuts very quickly, especially for an 18 volt tool. Okay, we'll move up to this one, which probably again, probably three inches, eh, three and a half, almost four inches. So three and three quarters of an inch diameter. So I'd say that's a good idea of what you would typically be cutting with this, say after a storm of just trimming some trees or whatever it may be. And there's an idea of how you use those bucking spikes or how you can uh, at least make them beneficial on this. 
I can kind of, you saw that limb kind of shaking because I've just got two attachment points back here with some construction screws. Uh, same thing if it were on a tree and starting to rock back and forth, what I can do is stabilize it by making my primary cut. And then I'm gonna use that bucking spike to kind of bury in there and then just use that as leverage, not necessarily to add uh, more pressure, but to keep that limb stable. So now you see as I rock that in, it's not shaking back and forth and I can get another bite here. And finish that cut. So again, now I can bury that bucking spike. So it's not just for adding leverage, it's to really calm that limb down to keep that from shaking back and forth as I'm cutting. Now we'll go to a little bit bigger log and this one should increase. We're at about four and a half, but I think it gets probably close to six as we move down. And I'll just kind of show this in one handed operation too. And now I'm starting to add some downward pressure while I'm cutting. I think you can hear by the tone in the RPM that I'm really putting some pressure against this, either with the bucking spikes or with downward pressure. And it really just keeps cutting. Typically on battery powered stuff, when you do that, it just cuts out. It goes into a cutout phase, which I'm kind of trying to find where that is on this, but I'm putting way more pressure than I thought I would. And you can see we're getting to, you know, we're at five and a half inch diameter right there, which by the way, on an eight inch bar, typically you're only probably getting seven inches of cutting. Yeah, so just over seven inches from an eight inch bar. So we're getting close to the maximum capacity of using a saw like this anyway, if we haven't passed that already. I'm literally putting more and more pressure on this thing by using those bucking spikes and I'm a little blown away that I'm not stopping this saw. There you go. So I really kind of leaned on it and was able to stop it, but still very impressive at the amount of pressure I'm able to put on this. So basically to reset, release the trigger and go back to it. I'll do it again. Okay, so I stopped it. Pull the trigger and go. Which by the way, this is a fresh fallen oak tree uh, after Hurricane Ian. So this is not a piece of dried piece of wood. Our Florida oaks have tons of moisture in them as well. Kind of a real pain to cut sometimes. And after 50 or some odd cuts, uh, we're still at three cells on this 6.0 battery. I really like the dexterity of this as well, that I can really control this very easily. Pretty center of gravity with this bigger battery on here, a little tail heavy, but not bad whatsoever, especially with two hands on, very agile saw. We were very impressed with this little eight inch hatchet. It worked very well. And I think typically with an eight inch blade, you're gonna be cutting that, you know, four inch and smaller type of limbs or logs. If you're that arborist, it's a very small saw that now you can hang uh, with your lanyard uh, on this loop here uh, and be able to meet the needs of cutting those smaller limbs without having to start a saw up in a tree, as well as the ability to just pull the trigger and within a second, you're at full RPM. This thing cut, really quick, much quicker than we anticipated, just like when we were at the show or at the pipeline event and impressed us then, because you can really 
bear down on this tool without it cutting out. Now, I'm not saying that it's like a 60cc saw. That's not what it's meant to be. But you can put much more pressure than your typical battery-powered saw without this thing cutting out. And if it does cut out, let off the trigger, pull it back, and it's ready to go again. Love the features of this very balanced tool, a very agile tool. You get a three-year warranty with the M18 hatchet, and it's $279 for the bare tool. I haven't seen it in a kit form yet, so just the bare tool, you're looking at $279. I know that's not crazy cheap. At the same time, I don't know of a battery-powered saw in this size and platform that will match the performance that we're seeing out of this. So check it out for yourself. Again, it's the Milwaukee 3004-20, uh, the M18 Fuel hatchet or eight inch pruning saw. Also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, then give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.